mama told me before she passed away. She said, son, when I'm gone, don't you forget to pray. Talking about those hard times. Who knows better than that? Better than I. What my mama meant Had to sell all of my clothes Just to pay the rent Talking about those hard times Oh yeah When I lost my money Oh, you know she put me down Talking about those hard Hard, those hard times Who know Better than I sorrow when I pass away cause there'll be hard times who knows better than I Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. I was, uh, I was born with a very, very fierce love of music inside of me. It was, <laughs> it was something I couldn't resist. And I can still remember the first time I heard the piano. It was so powerful for me. Um, and I ran to my, my mom and my stepdad and I said, I, I, wanna, I wanna take lessons. Please, I wanna learn how to, how to use that thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So I did. I was very thankful for the opportunity to be able to have the experience of learning an instrument. And it, it evolved into learning the piano and the guitar, and the drums, and the voice. And I love music so much that when I was 15, 16 years old in high school, I played sports and did the usual things, but I started going out to clubs and venues and bars, asking managers if I could perform for them. And they said yes. So that's what I did. I went out and I played. And I made money doing it, which was a great concept. I could do what I love and make money doing what I love. Cool. So at the same time, of course, my mom and my stepdad said, you are going to go to college, right? <laughs> which I did. And my stepfather had a great company he built from the ground up, 40 years old, family business. And he said, I really would love it if after college you could join me. And I said, really? <laughs> I know what I want to do. I'm a musician. That's my path. That's, I knew that since I was a little boy. I went to a concert with the money I was making playing gigs at 16 years old. I didn't save any of it. I spent it buying tickets to go see shows of my favorite artists playing in New York City in the tri-state area. And one of my favorite artists was a guy named Martin Sexton who really excelled in including and engaging his audience by asking them to react to what he was doing on stage. And I just loved that. And I'd only heard him on the radio and when I saw he was coming to New York, I bought some tickets. And I went with some friends. And he did a call and response performance type. So he would sing and he would say, now your turn. Now my turn. Now your turn. You can imagine at a sold out show at the Best Buy Theater in the city, several thousand seats occupied, when it was my turn to respond, I stood up and I sang so loud. And people looked at me like I was insane. People were like, what is this guy doing? But Martin Sexton heard me. And he stopped the show. <laughs> and he handed me his microphone and said, you can do this. Sing my song. You have a beautiful voice. So I went from being the fan in the audience, buying tickets to go see someone perform, to being the guy on stage, to a year later being the guy performing all over the United States. I work with the Allman Brothers Band, Gavin DeGraw, John Mayer, and Martin Sexton. I did shows everywhere. This was it. I had made it. This was my, my passion. My whole life was revolved around this moment. And I was living the life. I got to tell you, a lot of cool things happen when you're a musician. This was the plan. My singular line as a young man was to start here, wild rock star success. Cash, <laughs> girls, cars, fun, fame. All the stuff in the middle didn't matter. I'm just going to do that from here to here. But life had its own plans for me. And after hundreds and hundreds of performances and thousands of hours and years and years of perfecting my craft as, as a musician, I developed pain and inflammation in my, my arms and my neck. As you see, as I sit here at the piano, I'm protracted and I'm singing and I'm passionate. So I'm jerky. There's no real form when you're an artist. You just do what comes out. But one night, the pain was different than all the others. I, I knew it was much more severe. And after a performance of a lifetime for me, I woke up on the ground, on the stage, 
And I couldn't move. I couldn't move my hands. I couldn't move my fingers. I had broken my neck. I spent the next few years of my life learning everything again. And every day was a struggle. I was in constant pain. My family helped me through it all. I had assistants getting in and out of cars, putting on my clothing, tying my shoes. It was emotionally and physically extremely demanding. And at that time, I had this extreme climax of happiness that was ended so abruptly. And now, here I was with no plan, no straight line, and no real purpose. So what am I going to do? My whole life, I knew from four years old what I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. And I got to tell you, it was scary. Because the path back to success wasn't like the path that I had originally created, which was from point A to point B. There was a ton of stuff in the middle, like physical therapy and occupational therapy, learning how to live in pain. The goal was no longer to be a rock star. The goal was to be a happy, healthy human being, free of pain. That was it. Simple as that. Just wake up and try to get through each day. My life had changed. My priorities had changed. And for the first time in my life, as a young man, I had to mourn the loss of myself. So think about that. You know so strongly in your heart who you are, and now you have to say goodbye to that person. I had to figure out who I'm going to be. Where am I going to be? What's next? So my stepdad, who was always in the background talking to me about, you know, you should really give this job thing a nine to five thing. A, <laughs> give, give it a thought. He reached out to me and he said to me, son, I know how hard you've worked. I know how much pain you're in. I know your struggle. You are a great musician, but you can be more. It was the first time I realized, wow, this guy's pretty smart. <laughs> he was right. I could be more. And I had to really decide what steps I was going to take to be more. That journey changed my life. It was a different purpose. It was a different path. And I'm so thankful for my family and so thankful for the support that I've had in my life. And the one key thing that I want to talk to you about is finding that I know that now I'm not just a musician, but I'm also a teacher. I have a music school in Morristown here. I'm a businessman. And after today, I'll be a TED speaker, <laughs> which is pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. So my advice to you is to not paint yourself in a corner. Everybody has a purpose. But you may have multiple purposes, right? So keep your eyes and your heart and your mind open to opportunities, because if you take them all, you'll find balance. And you'll find success in multiple aspects of your life. And you can get through anything. Take it from me. So hopefully, I can end this talk with you by saying three things I, I usually do at the end of performances, which is thank you, 
And I'd like to sing a song called Hallelujah. There was a secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this the fourth, the fifth. This place and I've walked this floor. I used to live alone before I knew you. Love is not to cry at night, love is someone who holds you tight to go and it's a broken. Thank you.